As the geyser capital of the world, Yellowstone National Park is home to over 500 geysers, with the Grand Prismatic Spring taking center stage as the park's most spectacular and visited site. From the iconic Old Faithful Geyser to the mesmerizing Grand Prismatic Spring, the park is filled with some of the most powerful and beautiful geothermal wonders of our planet. But surprisingly, some of its most fascinating features are invisible to the naked eye. For decades, scientists have been fascinated by these tiny organisms. But now, NASA is poised to take the research to new heights, posing a far bigger question. Could these microbes be the gateway to discovering life on other planets? Recent NASA discoveries have revealed that our planet and outer space share more in common than we realized. For example, analyses of meteorites, comets, and other extraterrestrial materials have shown that many of the chemical elements and compounds found on Earth are also prevalent throughout the cosmos. Moreover, missions to other planets, moons, and even asteroids have uncovered striking similarities between the geological processes on Earth and those observed elsewhere in the solar system. The study of volcanism, plate tectonics, and the presence of water on other bodies has provided valuable insights into the conditions necessary for planetary habitability. Honestly, you might be thinking, what's the big deal with finding chemical compounds? But it gets very interesting. Because of these observations, NASA has recognized that our own planet can serve as a natural laboratory for future space explorations and discoveries. In recent years, NASA has developed an unusual interest in Yellowstone National Park. This study has piqued the curiosity of renowned scientists who wonder what NASA is seeking in this ancient, mysterious landscape. Before we delve into this puzzling question, let's first consider a few key facts about NASA's role and objectives. In very simple terms, NASA is a United States government agency established in 1958 to study and explore space. NASA stands for the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, and one of their primary goals is the search for extraterrestrial life. When NASA first started, they used rockets to launch small satellites and astronauts into space. The first American astronaut was named Alan Shepard. In 1961, he went up into space for a little while in a small capsule. Then in 1969, the famous astronaut Neil Armstrong became the first person to walk on the moon. This was a huge achievement for NASA and all of humanity. Since those early days, NASA has done so much more. They have sent robotic spacecraft to explore all the planets in our solar system, as well as asteroids and comets. Some of these spacecrafts have even left our solar system and are now traveling between the stars. NASA has also launched powerful telescopes like the Hubble Space Telescope and the James Webb Space Telescope that can see deep into the distant universe. On June 6, 2024, NASA's James Webb Space Telescope made an exciting new discovery about a young star called ISO Chal 147. The telescope's powerful instruments revealed something really special about this star. The telescope's mid-infrared instrument, MIRI, looked at a disk of gas and dust surrounding ISO Chal 147. What it found was the richest collection of carbon-containing molecules ever seen in a protoplanetary disk like this one. A total of 13 different carbon-based molecules were detected, including a substance called ethane. This discovery is helping scientists understand the chemistry of the disks where planets form. The gas around ISO Chow 147 is very rich in hydrocarbons, much more so than what's typically seen around sun-like stars. This suggests that any planets that end up forming around this low-mass star may have a very different carbon-poor composition compared to the planets in our own solar system. Studying the chemistry of these disks helps us further understand how planets and their atmospheres form. These findings from NASA have helped scientists learn a lot about how our solar system and the universe formed and evolved over billions of years. We've also discovered that many planets are orbiting other stars. Some of these planets may even support life, though we haven't found any signs of life out there yet. However, NASA believes that we are very close to discovering extraterrestrial life. 
Hey guys, we did a video about another surprising NASA project, but this time underwater. Be sure to check it out. Let's jump back into the video. Why is NASA interested in Yellowstone National Park? Yellowstone is a huge national park in the western United States. It covers over 3,400 square miles, which is larger than the state of Rhode Island. The park is mostly located in the northwestern corner of Wyoming, but it also stretches into the neighboring states of Montana and Idaho. Yellowstone is a very special place. It's the world's first national park established back in 1872. This means the U.S. government decided to protect this amazing area of land and keep it open for everyone to enjoy. National parks are places of natural beauty that the government wants to preserve for future generations. So what makes Yellowstone so unique? Well, the park is filled with incredible natural wonders. One of the most famous features is the many hot springs and geysers. Geysers are vents in the Earth's surface that periodically shoot up columns of hot water and steam. Old Faithful is probably the most well-known geyser in Yellowstone. It erupts about every 90 minutes, sending a stream of steaming water up to 180 feet in the air. Yellowstone has more geysers than the rest of the world combined. It's not a typical volcano with a cone or wide, flat shape. Instead, it's an underground volcano with a huge magma chamber that's the heat source. It's like the volcanoes in Hawaii, where hot spots in the Earth's crust create volcanic activity. But in Yellowstone, the crust is thicker. The hot springs in Yellowstone are also quite remarkable. These are pools of bubbling, colorful water that comes from the park's volcanic underground. The water in the hot springs can reach temperatures of over 200 degrees Fahrenheit. The water in Yellowstone's hot springs and geysers come from regular surface water like rain and snow. This water cools the hot magma chamber and then rises back up to the surface, forming the hydrothermal systems. The different colors you see in the springs comes from the various types of bacteria and minerals in the water. Aside from the geothermal features, Yellowstone is home to lots of amazing wildlife. Large animals like grizzly bears, wolves, bison, and elk all roam freely throughout the park. Yellowstone has the largest concentration of mammals in the lower 48 states. Visitors to the park often get the chance to see these magnificent creatures in their natural habitats. The landscapes of Yellowstone are just as breathtaking as the wildlife. The park contains a diverse array of ecosystems, from lush forests and alpine meadows to canyons, rivers, and volcanic landscapes. Yellowstone is also known for its stunning waterfalls. The most famous is the Lower Yellowstone Falls, which plunges 308 feet down into the Grand Canyon of the Yellowstone. That's over twice the height of Niagara Falls. The roar of the waterfall and the mist in the air are truly awe-inspiring sights. Despite all of Yellowstone's natural wonders, the park sits atop one of the world's largest supervolcanoes. This massive underground volcano has erupted catastrophically three times in the past 2.1 million years, though the last eruption was over 630,000 years ago. Since 1923, volcanologists have been measuring this activity. They say the ground rose about 25 centimeters or 9.8 inches between 2004 and 2009. However, in 2010, the land began to subside. Scientists are constantly monitoring the volcano's activity, but they say a full-scale eruption is extremely unlikely to happen anytime soon. But one of the most fascinating natural features is the Grand Prismatic Spring, which is the largest hot spring in the United States. With its vibrant shades of orange, yellow, and green, it looks like something out of a fantasy movie. The spring gets its incredible colors from different types of thermophilic bacteria that thrive in the hot, mineral-rich water. In the center, the water is a deep, mesmerizing blue. As you move out towards the edges, the colors change. Bright orange, yellow-green, and red. It's like stepping into a beautiful living rainbow. What's really amazing is that you can see all these vibrant colors from high above on the Overlook Trail. It's an absolutely breathtaking sight, like nothing else on Earth. The spring is huge, measuring over 370 feet across and over 120 feet deep. That's about the size of a football field. The water in the center is a scorching 160 degrees Fahrenheit, but it gradually cools towards the edges. 
This temperature difference allows different types of microbes to grow in different zones, creating that stunning rainbow effect. Hey guys, just a moment before we continue. Be sure to join the Insane Curiosity channel. Click on the bell, you'll help us to make products of even higher quality. How can microbes survive in the grand prismatic spring? And how does this study help NASA discover extraterrestrial life? NASA has been conducting research expeditions in Yellowstone National Park in recent years to study the park's unique geological and environmental features. Yellowstone is a really special place, and NASA is interested in studying it to help with their space exploration missions. You see, Yellowstone is home to a giant volcano that's still active underground. This volcano makes the park have all kinds of crazy hot springs, geysers, and other cool geological features. NASA's studying these features because they believe they might find clues as to how extraterrestrial life survives in similar harsh conditions in space. NASA's primary interest lies in understanding the origins of life, an area of great scientific importance. But here's an important piece of information you probably didn't know. While the life visible to the naked eye is ultimately supported by the sun's energy, there's a remarkable form of life that is quite different. These organisms derive their energy not from the sun, but from chemical sources. This chemosynthetic life emerged much earlier in Earth's history, predating the development of photosynthesis by nearly a billion years. Here's where it gets interesting. Yellowstone National Park provides a unique opportunity to study these early life forms and their chemical energy sources. The park's hydrothermal systems, such as hot springs and geysers, bring the necessary chemical energy to the surface, enabling the existence and proliferation of these unique organisms. By studying the extremophiles thriving in Yellowstone's unique environments, scientists can gain valuable insights into the diverse pathways through which life can form and evolve, even in the absence of solar energy. NASA's exploration of these systems in collaboration with research conducted at Yellowstone is of great scientific value in unraveling the mysteries of life, origins on our planet, and the universe at large. Also, some parts of Yellowstone have extremely hot, acidic waters. This may be similar to the conditions on a place like Jupiter's moon Europa, which is thought to have a vast ocean underneath its icy surface. The tiny organisms that live in Yellowstone's hot springs could be similar to any potential life forms that might exist in Europa's ocean. By studying these Yellowstone microbes, NASA can learn about how life might survive in other extreme environments in space. Detailed research conducted by Dr. Thomas Dale Brock in the late 1960s further explains this. Dr. Thomas Dale Brock is a pioneering researcher who made important contributions to our understanding of the microbial life that thrives in the extreme environments of thermal springs like the Grand Prismatic. Dr. Brock's research in the late 1960s focused on studying thermophilic, heat-loving microorganisms, which are organisms that can survive and even thrive in scorching hot waters like the Grand Prismatic Spring and other geothermal features. However, the Grand Prismatic Spring is home to a diverse array of extremophiles, organisms that have adapted to survive in the most extreme environments. These include bacteria, archaea, and even some eukaryotic microorganisms that have evolved specialized strategies to cope with the intense heat, high mineral content, and other challenging conditions of the spring. Dr. Brock's pioneering work in the 1960s helped lay the foundation for our understanding of these remarkable extremophiles. He was able to isolate and study many of the thermophilic organisms that inhabit the Grand Prismatic Spring and other Yellowstone geothermal features, shedding light on their unique metabolic processes, cellular structures, and evolutionary adaptations. This research has had far-reaching implications, not just for our understanding of life in extreme environments, but also for fields like astrobiology, the study of the potential for life on other planets. While Dr. Bronx can be accessed in theory, Yellowstone National Park gives NASA a practical ground to study these thermophilic microorganisms and draw useful observations. NASA is also really interested in the mineral deposits and other biosignatures left behind by the microbes in Yellowstone. These biosignatures are kind of like fossil footprints, showing evidence that living things were once there. 
When NASA sends rovers to explore other planets, they'll be looking for similar biosignatures to try and find signs of past or present life. Studying the biosignatures in Yellowstone can help them learn what to look for. Finally, Yellowstone provides the perfect testing ground for NASA to try out new technologies and instruments before using them on real space missions. The park is remote, rugged, and has all kinds of extreme conditions, just like what you'd find on other planets. NASA can send prototype rovers and other tools to Yellowstone to see how well they work in harsh environments. This helps NASA make sure their machines are ready for the real challenges of space exploration. By studying extremophiles that thrive in Yellowstone's hot springs and analyzing the geochemical signatures of the park's hydrothermal systems, NASA scientists hope to better understand the limits of life and the types of biosignatures that could be detected on potentially habitable worlds. The lessons learned from this research will help guide future robotic and human missions to explore the most promising locations for finding signs of alien life. Yellowstone's role as a natural laboratory for astrobiology ensures it will continue to be an important focus of NASA's Earth-based exploration efforts in the coming years. Do you think NASA's exploration will bring us close to uncovering life on Mars? Is there a possibility that Yellowstone can uncover some of the secrets of moons like Europa and Enceladus? Feel free to leave your answers in the comments below. If you liked the video, then you should check out the one on your screen. These five most updated hypotheses about life on Mars will blow your mind. Thanks for watching.